when you're feeling down And like your world's moving slow Just remember your race It moves at your pace when marching towards your goals And Nothing is impossible, don't take impossible, you're brighter than the stars. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talking with 3D. I am your host, Derek Durrell Dixon, and this is Real Talk for Real People. And we're right here on Plush Work TV. And I am so excited, I have another exciting show. I have the cast, the writer, director, producer from this stage play that is coming September 10th, Treachery, Lies, and Deception. And we have some of the guests here today, and we're going to be chopping it up about acting, about the play, getting to know Miss Margaret Bean right here on Talking with 3D. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy this show today because you don't want to miss it. We want to make sure that you are in the house September 10th. It's going to be in the Bowie Performance Theater Arts Center in Bowie, Maryland. Again, treachery, lies, and deception. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome the cast of the stage play Tre Treachery. Lies and Deception. So welcome, Margaret, Casey, and Avery to Talking with 3D. How is everyone doing today? Fine, thank you. Truly appreciate That's being well. here. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome, 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 <laughs> awesome. So listen, Miss Margaret, yes. you are the writer and director of the stage play. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself first off, and let's get to know you better. Well, I am a multi-published author. I am a native New Yorker. I moved to Maryland about 30 years ago um, and I was married at the time. I have four lovely daughters. I got seven grandchildren now, divorced. When I got divorced, life happened. I wrote some books and after the first interview, they were like, oh, it's a year later. What are you doing now? So I sat down and I wrote a play called A Game Changer and mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew I had to get people to read the vision and run with it. So I did auditions, people showed up and the next thing you know, we were having rehearsals. We had two shows and then we went on tour from 2017 to 2019. So I figured out what I was doing, of course, the, the journey of the, the on the journey. And so uh, pandemic hit and I was working on another play project. I had got hired by a lady to work on a play project for her and the pandemic hit. So I kind of got shut down. Mm. And so I said, I have to do something. So I flipped the script and I started publishing books for other people. So MPB publishing, um, helping people to get their books on Amazon published and just making their dreams come true. And now that we're coming out of the pandemic, um, I've taken this play that I wrote two years ago, revised it, upgraded it, and once again, put it out for auditions. People came and we're on our way to the stage. So I'm excited about it. Wow. <laughs> And th th this is what's amazing to me, because when you said life started, you know, you had went through a divorce mm -hmm. and life started. It's amazing what sometimes we hold on to because we think that we can fix it. We can change it. Um, things are going to change. But mm -hmm. as soon as we let go of something and I always say, let go and let God mm -hmm. and then life begins. Mm -hmm. So yeah. not, not to get into your personal business or anything, but how did you finally just realize who Margaret Bean was after you went through that situation. When did you find yourself? Because did you find yourself lost before? 
Um, I always say that me and my ex-husband were good parents. We just never nurtured the marriage piece of us. And so my heart grew cold towards God because when you talk about change, I was praying for him to change and God told me I needed to change. And so, Mm. okay, God, get me out of this situation so that I can begin to change for the betterment of me. My kids are grown. I've done my part when it comes to them and I need to invest some time in me now. And so um, I did just that. I invested time in me and um, my father was a pastor and I was a secret child. And so his last name was St. Clair. And in discovering me, Madison, that is my writing pen name. She is a uh-huh. diva, honey. She is all of that. Madison St. Clair. And um, just taking my rightful name and my rightful place as a woman and evolving mm. every day, um, learning more about me and my writing, helping others to discover their dreams because I love to give back to people. And so just developing a better me every day and enjoying the, the journey, you know, um, I've been single now for eight, nine years. I did the dating thing for a while. And so what we Mm -hmm. got out of that was the game changer stage play. (laughs) (laughs) Names have been changed to protect no one. (laughs) (laughs) And so we're back at it again. Treachery, lies, and deception. Nobody's telling the truth. Everybody's betraying everybody. And people who you think is your good girlfriend or your best boyfriend, they ain't nothing. (laughs) So um, me as a person, just discovering who I am every day, trying to be better than I was yesterday, you know, um, that's all, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring some good quality entertainment. I've worked on some films. I'm a certified camera operator. I have my hand in the TV shows, you know, just all, all things entertainment, trying to bring it all home. Um, MPB entertainment, um, finalized my name this year. And so just trying to come out with a new brand. Um, I'm working with a marketing company mm. to give me a new brand and just come with it this year, like never before, because we've been down for like the last two or three years. And so I'm excited. Right. We're getting back out and able to do some. Yes. Yep, so I'm excited. Wow. Mark, when you are writing, I mean, you know, writer to writer, and I love mm-hmm. writing stage plays and I've um, mm-hmm. authored three books, one children's book, and then two two personal books, when you're writing a personal book, mm-hmm. how, um, you know, do you go through a period where you think that you're exposing yourself too much and is it therapeutic for you? Do you then say, you know what, I finally have written my truth, I've told my truth, and people are now able to read my truth? Um, I haven't written that book yet. I write a lot of inspirational books for people to be inspired and motivated to do and live their dreams. I, the closest I've gotten to that is um, Madison St. Clair's Turning Points. And in there, I share some silent moments and some um, poems. And in there, one that specifically my mother had brain um, breast cancer. And I share that day when the doctor told her that she was going to die. And my mom was real classy and the chemo had burnt her skin and she had lost her hair. And the doctor just like flat out, you're going to die. And she Mm. put her mink hat on and her mink coat on and she walked out. She said, I'm not dying today. And we Mm. got around the corner and we sat down before the next appointment and my mother cried. I had never in my life seen my mother cry. And at that moment, it was like the roles had reversed. I had became the mother. She became the daughter. And the only thing that my mother could think about was, was she a good mother? And the first thoughts in my mind was like, dang, when I was 16, I was running away from home. I was a bad child. And here it is. She <laughs> wondering if she was a good mother. And right. all I could tell her was that she was a great mother. So I share that story in there and I relived the whole thing. Um, Another story that I share in there, uh, two of my sister-in-laws had HIV. And so in the Game Changer, Mm. I always try to do a healthcare awareness piece. So in the Game Changer, I incorporated a message about HIV. And even though we Mm. have all of these new medicines and you can't detect it, women are still getting pregnant and having children. And somewhere along the line, I'm sure it's still being transmitted. And so um, in 2017 to 19, I just brought that message out. My brother came to the show. He asked actually has it. And um, the way that we did the show was very um, 
informative and he was really proud of the end results. So just trying to keep the integrity of the, the concern for HIV. This particular show, uh, Treachery, Lies and Deception, the healthcare piece is mental illness and domestic violence. Um, during the pandemic, people were locked in, domestic violence rates rose, but mental mm -hmm. illness, people were in dark places before the pandemic. And so they've gotten even darker. And we as a race, we really don't like to talk about we got anxiety. When my mother did die, um, I was strong for about six months and then anxiety just overtook me and I couldn't get out the bed. I was afraid to go across the street. Um, I had to take medicine. I had to talk about some things that were happening to me and I'm okay, you know, and I'm okay right. with talking about what I need to talk about. And at first I wasn't, I was kind of embarrassed and shamed because I wanted to go to the store and I would get paralyzed and I couldn't go any further. And my heart was pounding and it was just a lot of anxiety and adrenaline going that I was not used mm. to. And so I had to talk about it and I had to process grief because grief um, is a part of mental illness as well, because there are parts of your body that you have no control over. And right. so I want to share in the production um, about mental health and it's okay to talk about it it's okay to get help and I um, have an organization called Rock for Life they are a mental health organization they provide services and they're going to have a table at the show so that we can give out information and I just want people to feel comfortable to get the information and get the help that they need. Do you think that because I, I always have said that you know especially in the brown and black community we also, we fear it so much mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. want to say that we, you know, are, have some type of mental illness mm -hmm. or, you know, a family member or something. So mm -hmm. we don't want to go sit on the couch mm -hmm. and we hold on to those family secrets mm -hmm. and we hold on to so much mm -hmm. that it suppresses, you know, all the feelings. Mm -hmm. This, this story that you're telling, Treachery, Lies, and Deception, will it allow people to see themselves and be able to think, hmm, maybe I do need to, you know, to get some help. Maybe there's someone out there that will hear me and understand me. So by them seeing this stage play, how will they then see themselves and then walk out? What will they get from it? Um, everyone will leave with something different. Everyone will leave with a different thought provoking, um, part of the message because there are, we're dealing with generational curses when it comes to the mm -hmm. domestic violence. Um, mm -hmm. when it comes to the mental health, it, it was brought on by a trauma. And so, um, betrayal and mm -hmm. friendships are being tested. And so you're going to see yourself somewhere in this production and you're going to walk out with some thought provoking. And I'm hoping that people will be honest and stop at the table and get the information rather it be for themselves or for someone else. Um, I also want to have an 800 number set up that if you don't want to stop at the table that you can call and say, hey, I have a problem and I need to mm -hmm. talk to somebody. So trying to make those resources available on a confidential scale, because a lot of times we feel that there's a stigma associated with being honest. I'm honest. I, my mother died. Grief overtook me. Anxiety overtook me. And it's not something that um, I asked for, but my body just went through the changes. And at the end of the day, sometimes we go through things in life that we have no control over, but we can get mm -hmm. control over it if we're honest with ourselves and don't worry about the stigma that people have placed on it. Sitting down on a couch, talking to someone, processing what's going on in your mind, it's okay. It's definitely mm. okay. Um, we it's can get sad, we can get depressing. Right. Um, it's different forms of mental illness. People think, oh, I'm going to St. Elizabeth, I'm going to be in a crazy house. <laughs> right. No, I got anxiety because I'm just so anxious about how life is going to turn out. We just came out of a pandemic and I couldn't see my family for months and I'm by myself and it's just been traumatizing. So, you know, to be able to come out, some people still have fear and phobia to come out, you know, yeah. um, 
that's mm -hmm. a form of illness where your body is taking control over you and you need to take right. control back over it. And so it's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to um, bash or tease or anything. I just want them to know that sometimes there is a light at the end of the tunnel that when you're mm -hmm. depressed and you're in a dark place, there's people who go through it people that understand it. And guess what? You may not go to a therapist on a traditional basis, but here's a play showing you yourself and showing you that it's okay to go through these processes and to actually talk to someone. So yeah. I, I thank God for the mass, the message that I can bring to the masses in an untraditional way. And then, like you say, the pandemic set in, COVID set in, mm -hmm. and uh, just shut down everything from mm -hmm whatever you theater music mm -hmm. you, your life mm -hmm. do you think and because you say that you you know you bring a positive outlook on hiv um, on mental illness do you think at times that covid has overshadowed what the message that we try to put out about say hiv mental illness that all of a sudden covid came out and we no longer talk about those things mm -hmm. so do you think it's taken a back seat and now it's time for us to say, okay, this is still going on in the world as well? Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. We, we trying to hide and cover everything behind the pandemic, but these things yeah. still exist. Mental illness still exists during the pandemic. It heightened it. HIV, um, you know, now you got to be having sex with your partner that lives at home and who they've been with when they weren't right. in the pandemic. You just never know. But um, it, it's real. Everything that we deal with is real. Um, there's reality and perception, but then there's real. And what's real right now is that everything is covered by COVID. So whatever you may go through with the mental health issue, oh, COVID, uh, you know, your sex life, COVID, you know, you're buying a home, it's COVID. Everything is COVID related. And we, it, it, even so when I did yeah, when I did the Game Changer and I was talking about HIV, um, the guy, the game decided he wanted to get married and um, the girl thought she was pregnant and she was telling her friends, I got HIV and she couldn't understand mm. why God allowed it to happen to her. And so she's singing this dramatic song and people of course were crying. And a lady came to me after it was her daughter actually had HIV and she wished that her daughter would have been able to see the message that it was okay to go to the doctor it was okay that you contracted it. It may not have been your fault, but here's some medicine and protect yourself. And so mm. um, even in the 21st century, people are still having unprotected sex and diseases are still running rampant and nobody wants to address it. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, we are here with Margaret Bean and some of the cast of the stage play Treachery, Lies, and Deception, which is coming September 10th. You've been, we've been talking to Margaret and we're going to come back and meet some of the guests, but little, listen, Margaret, let me just say a little bit, Margaret, she is a dynamic woman who takes Aww. pen in hand yeah. and flows in short stories, poems, and silent moments. She shares from a place of inner beauty to bring forth words that share reality, also truths and stories that edify, encourage, and simply just inspire the reader to want to read more and write mm -hmm their own inner desires of their heart. So you've been hearing right here, Margaret Bain. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is Real Talk for Real People. <laughs> Let me look under these apodidus, or apodidus, 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 What? Appetizer. You so smart, huh? <laughs> you don't know nothing? What you know? What's a nacho? It's on the menu. It what is a nacho? A nacho is chips. It comes with cheese. And no, salsa. a nacho is when you see a fine man that belongs to somebody else. That's something that's nacho. <laughs> now, what you know? <laughs> what you better you know? work it out. You better work it out. You don't know nothing. <laughs> you're so smart. Little young buck. That's what's your problem. You're too smart for your own good. <laughs> Go that. back and find that me some good. college screens. Mashed potatoes, ham hocks, chitterlings, and some sweet tea. Make sure it's sweet. If it ain't sweet, you know black folk will open every pack of sugar in the restaurant for one glass <laughs> of tea. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back again. We are here 
with the writer-director of Treachery, Lies, and Deception, and two of the castmates of the play. That is coming once again September 10th at the Bowie Performing Arts uh, Theater Arts Center in Bowie, Maryland. So please make sure, we're going to make sure that you have all the information for you to go get tickets because we need to sell this out and we want everyone to be there. But we have two of the cast members that are also in the play. We've got Casey Kelly in the house. Hey. And Antonio Avery is in the house. So hey, welcome everybody. Hey, hey. With 3D. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to just give a little, little information and I'll let them talk about themselves as well. Casey is from Silver Spring, Maryland. She's a native. She found her passion for stage late in life. But you know what? That's always a good thing. I always tell people, you never too old or never, it's never too late to follow Thank your you. and do your dream. And I always tell people, you can dream, but you got to wake up from that dream too to follow uh. that passion. But we'll talk <laughs> about that later. <laughs> so she is, um, she's in the production that opened up her eyes and a hidden passion for the stage play that was dormant, that experience lit a way to, to uh, starring in numerous roles with Heralds of Hope Productions, the most notable role as Lady Blue for Colored Girls that yes. uh, for who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. So welcome, yeah. Kate <laughs> Kelly. We also have Mr. Antonio Avery. How are you? Antoine, sir? Antoine, Antoine. Antoine, Antoine, I knew I was going to say that right. I knew it was Antoine, but I just want you to just say it. But listen, <laughs> Antoine raised right here in, in Washington, D.C., started his career as a model. He also is now working on the stage play, uh, Treachery, Lies, and Deception. So again, welcome both of you to Talking with 3D. I'm going to start with you, Casey. Tell the okay. uh, audience a little bit about yourself. You got a late start, you said, in, in the acting theater business. So what, yes. what made you and you knew that this was something that you wanted to do? Oh, I think it was probably the reaction that I got, that I, that I felt. The, when you're on the stage, the, the first time I was ever on stage was at church. Let me, let me just go there. So, and then that led to other plays, but being on stage for when I was Lady in Blue, um, it was an overwhelming feeling. I, I, I can't even, there's no words that can describe the growth that you have on stage that can make you uh, understand yourself and better and grow more. Like you, you get deep into feelings that you didn't even know you had. I'm sorry, you know, when you're doing live TV and your children are in the background and everything, and you got uh, to do. <laughs> they last <laughs> hour right now. Well, working from home. Listen, but we got to keep going. We got to keep going. Listen, so Casey, you know, finding your passion and finding that love, mm -hmm. what is one of the hardest things? I always want to know this that what is one of the hardest things that you find about being in theater? Because ha do you, have you done movies yet or just so far? Um, no, I've gone to, I think for movies itself, it's auditioning. Um, okay. there, you know, I think mm. that for, for what I've experienced, I haven't actually, well, I go in and I read an audition, but I don't fit, I don't believe I'm fitting that role that they're looking for. Mm. And so, and so I don't, so I'm finding, I'm trying to find what they're looking for more so than just basically trying to, be myself. I think that that's more so what you need to do when you're auditioning. It's you bring the th you bring the character to life. But I think that if you can put yourself into it, it helps as well. Um, and sometimes you, it may be that's not what's fitting for that character. But I that doesn't stop me from trying. I'm, you know, one no for a thousand no's. There's going to be one yes at some point in time. Yes. And let me give you a little bit of advice, um, um, Casey. Because a lot of times when we do go in for interviews and auditions and things like that, we think that we don't fit the role, but you don't know what the other roles that are available. So when one director sees you for this, you never know what they have in their mind for you for something else. So when you go in for those auditions, like you say, you go in and you audition and be the best person that you are because you will open up many doors 
many doors that will open up for you. And then you yes. will be see yourself that every single time you go in like, oh, that's KC. I would love to have her in this, <laughs> love to have her in that. So never yes. think that you don't fit the role. Okay. Just know that that's just not, that's just, that opportunity is not for you, but yes. there's several more for you. Okay. We also have <laughs> Mr. Avery in the house. Mr. Avery, please again, tell us a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, uh, I first started off as a model when I was 22 years old. Uh, gradually got into acting around 32, 33. Um, it was fun. I, I actually fell into it. It wasn't something I was passionate about. Um, actually, when I was in high school, uh, a few of my classmates was like, you know, you should come to the fashion show. I'm like, I ain't doing no fashion show. That's not my thing. So at 22, I actually uh, tried my hand at Model Search America. Mm. And um, I got selected, actually, <laughs> for an agency in Virginia and everything. At the time, I wasn't serious about it and left it alone. Actually, um, a young lady who I was dating actually asked me to do a sh fashion show for her. And mm -hmm. at the time, I said, okay, I did it. You know, it was, it was fun, it was whatever, whatever. But I'm a type of person, wherever I do, I give it 110%. So I was like, all right, God. At the time, I was, getting, I was in between getting ready to go to play football or do I want to model? Mm -hmm. so, it was, so I was like, whichever one kick off first, that's what I'm going to do. I said, God, whichever one you allowed to happen, that's what I'm gonna take. Modeling took off. So actually model, modeling actually helped with my confidence, me getting in, in, in better health and just building me up as an all around person because I'm naturally a shy guy. Most people don't think so, but I am. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> Did he say he was shy? Yeah. That's the lies and deception. That's that lies and deception. That's the lies and deception. The lies you tell. Oh, yes. Um, but I, that model actually helped my confidence in so many different things. Um, because a lot of things I do in this industry, I don't like doing at all. So it's funny, and 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 a lot of people like asking, why do you do these things in which you don't like? I said, well. I don't know. I just personally, I don't like it. It's just me playing a role. Mm -hmm. But when I got into acting, I actually developed a passion for it. It was fun. Um, my first stage play, which was uh, Bound and Gag, uh, uh, done by uh, Shannon Wynn Productions, it was about domestic violence. And I played the bad guy. <laughs> my very mm. first play, had to play the bad guy. And that role, I literally had to choke and slap, slap the girl. And okay. I will never forget. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and I remember we was getting ready for a show in Mobile, Alabama, and the director, she was like, Avery, I want you to slap her. No, really slap her. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> She's like, no, I want you to slap her. I was like, no, I'm not, I don't hit women, no. And we rehearsed me slapping the young lady. She's like, I'm fine, Avery, go ahead. It's like mm -hmm. every time I slapped her, tears came down my face. I literally mm. had to pause and was like, Grandma, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Forgive me because that's not me. And everyone kept saying, Avery, we know it's not you, but it's the character. Mm -hmm. And so then that's why I learned how to tap into the things I've, I've experienced in the past. So it was like, who do I know that's an abuser? Mm. And, I, and I actually know a person that is an abuser. And I had to remember that time where I saw him abuse a woman. And mm. I became him in the play. Wow. So I literally had to, I literally had to, I guess you can say, uh, it was this body, uh, 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 body change, exchange bodies or mind, whatever you want to call mm. it, transformation, body whatever. Spot. Yes, yes, yes. I did that and literally it, it got great reviews. I mean, the audience didn't like me. So I, I guess that's an excellent that was a good thing. Right. And when the <laughs> like you. you've done your job. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I literally and and I develop a passion for it. It's like every role that God has allowed me to have, I can connect to the character in some form of fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I just got to the stage this past weekend where I played a bad boy. Um, and, <laughs> and 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 that's why I got the baby face right now. Yeah, I was <laughs> I about to say, I'm gonna need that hair to grow back by the photo shoot on Saturday, dude. Seriously. It's a chia pet or something. <laughs> and um, it was that, I, I must say, that was one of the, one of the um, roles that was very 
next to the road, one of the challenging roles I had to play because once again, it's doing an out of body experience. So right. um, becoming, being a 16 year old who mother gave him up to the police station and he was raised in foster right. care, not knowing who his mother is to now all of a sudden it's been, you've been told this is your mother. Literally we had two sold out shows and the same thing I heard from both shows was like from grown men, like mm -hmm. telling me, hey, I'm from the streets, raised from the streets. I didn't come up here to cry. So to hear oh, grown wow. men say wow. that you wow. made me cry because of what I did and hearing the reviews and, and responses from everything let me know that I did my job, God yes. gave me this talent and I did the job and I did it well for, you know, for the message that was given. And I do would like to thank Marissa for giving me the opportunity to do that and to be a part of that production. Mm -hmm. um, as well as when I got with Miss Margaret, she got me as the good guy. I love her. She always cast me as the I good always, guy. Yes. I, lo I, love, guy. I love her. I love yes. her. Um, even exactly. again, I met Miss Margaret. I met I, I met Miss Margaret, aka my stage mom. Yeah, and, and, and game changer. And it's funny because I she wanted me to play the bad guy at first. Okay. <laughs> she wanted me to play the bad guy at first, but then she switched me up as a good guy. And it worked out. It, it worked out. Um, everybody loved the show as well. And I, I love it. And I hate talking in front of people. I get I'm, I am shy. I don't like talking. So she always has me talking to the audience. Which ah. drives me crazy. <laughs> well, Avery, I don't know, Mr. A, I don't know where your shyness comes because you've been I'm talking. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, I was like, wait a minute. I told, I told you it's lies and deception, Derek. It's lies and deception. <laughs> That's how I went in Academy is Awards going. for all this I mean, and deception. I have to play, I mean, like acting, you gotta play the role. You, even though you may be shy, you can't, you gotta play the role. You gotta, you gotta go Look, with the flow. You, you can go fix with the it up all you want to. Fix it any way you want to. You yeah. come out of your cocoon. So you can, you, you can stop telling everybody I'm shy, you are not shy. Yeah. Well, you know, I, think you, I, I want to interject. I think what really helps is character development. I create shells yes. of who a character is, and then they go home and they do character development. So they have to come back with a backstory of their character. And the reason why I have them do character development with backstories is so when you get on stage, it's real for you, and you can pull on that family that you created. That's so right. a lot of times the families that they come back with are abusive or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I need you to pull on that tear or that pain i need you to go to that family that you created because it's a safe place that's number one because you created right. it and then you can pull from there when i do my auditions i just do monologues pick a monologue so i can see where you pull your emotions from um also that character development piece is very very um, key and then the reason why we're here so early and the show is in september is because i want us to have authentic relationship when we're on stage so yeah. um um, the role that he's playing mentioned is still the pandemic. People still separated. That too. Well, just just an authentic too. relationship on stage, and so the the role that he's playing right now, he's a good guy, and the lady that he is, um, her his counterpart, <laughs> um, they they connect. And the other day, she was just like, "Oh, he's been very helpful. He's been this, that, and the other." And when you're on stage, you need that connection with like mm -hmm. that 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 scene partner that says mm -hmm. it's safe for me to 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 act. It's safe for me to do because a lot of times I have seasoned actors, and then I have new actors, which I love mm -hmm. the new actors because you can help develop them and then the old actors they can help develop them they can make connections and um the the show that he's talking about that he was just in this weekend that's my niece she was in my show she had never written anything she has written mm -hmm. a play that sold out two shows and yes. so to be able to um, impart things into people where they can begin to live their dreams and their realities it's amazing to me I was so proud of her over the weekend and I was so proud of her. Name? Her, her name is Mar Marissa Jackson. Marissa she Jackson. Play, yeah, she is a playwright and director and her stage play is called A Mother's Prayer and mm. Avery played in her show. Some of the other cast that were in The Game Changer were in there too so I really appreciate that they step out and they do other things because this um, arena sometimes can be small, but then sometimes it could be big. And so you mm -hmm. can go for a lot of auditions. And so Keisha said that 
the role wasn't for her. It may not have been that the role wasn't for her. It's just so much talent out here that a yeah. lot of times you you pick and choose people who you're comfortable with. Um, right. Tyler Perry does right. it all the time. He uses the same cast. You will never get into his cast. You know, I always tell people. people all. I tell people all the time that Tyler Perry. Do not go for it's audition. The same, it, it, it's same the same people. story. All he did was change the title. That's it. Yeah. And it's the same people all the time. So, Every time it's you know, I, I try to give people a chance um, at different parts. And so Keisha came, she was someone else in the beginning. And it's because she couldn't yes. sing. It wasn't because she couldn't handle the role. She couldn't sing. Okay. So yeah. she, 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 she no, could do karaoke. Like she, she could do karaoke. There's a difference yes. between karaoke yes. and singing. But you, and needed, you needed a voice. I needed a voice. Yes. But we okay. made a change. And so now Keisha is now my leading lady. And I I have a lady who is singing in the show who is working with Keisha to give me those emotions because I don't want her to sound like Vivian Green and I don't want her to sound like Aretha. The roles and the songs that she needs to sing at that moment after her husband Absolutely. is doing some stuff to her, she just needs to sound like this dude just beat the crap out of me and she mm -hmm. doesn't need to sound like Aretha Franklin. So it's, yeah, it's no. working itself out. I need strong actors who can learn their lines and be able to add lib and if you lose your place they can bring you back and Keisha and right back. can do right. that so well um, mm -hmm. they they have um, known each other they both were in Game Changer and the people that I have I think that they are amazing. They're new working with me. My stage manager, Gwen Lewis, is amazing. She gives out great techniques. When the director is done with her part and we go to stage, I turn them over to her and she just makes things happen behind the scenes. So we got some really great talented people in the DMV yes, and I'm grateful to be definitely. a part of helping develop them and give them opportunities because a lot of times there's not a lot of opportunities because people use the same people all the time. That's Good. right. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we're going to be right back. We're going to take one more quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we are going to fit, um, go into our last segment. We're going to talk more about the play, where you can get tickets, and just learn a little bit more about our guests. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I felt like a Spanish, like a Puerto Rican in this hair. I felt Puerto Rican. Y'all know I love me some Puerto Rican. I felt Puerto Rican in this. Rican. Ooh. Selena wasn't Puerto Rican, bro. Selena wasn't Puerto Rican. No. She was Mexican. But the girl that played her Puerto Rican. That's not the point, though. J-Lo, she Puerto Rican. That's the point, though. She's playing the real person, the real person. The real person, the real artist that she's playing is not Puerto Rican. With well, J-Lo ain't Motown either, but she was singing Motown. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again. I'm here with Margaret Bean and two of the cast members of the stage play coming September 20th, Treachery, Lies, and Deception at the Bowie Performance Theater Arts Center in Bowie, Maryland. Listen, we was backstage and everything, and we cut up and everything. You <laughs> have to go see this play. You I'm cannot sorry. miss it. So we're going to make sure that you have the information. This cast, I'm telling you, they got the energy of the, <laughs> the, the energizer bunny ain't got nothing on them. I'm letting you know right now. I will make sure that we post about this play and you guys are yes. there. Listen, Mark, I want to ask you a quick question before yes. we uh, lose time. And then we're going to let everybody know where to get tickets and okay. talk a little okay. bit more about what they should expect. Okay. But um, like Avery was saying, and Casey may have uh, mentioned it as well, when an actor feels like, you know what, and, um, you know, this is not based on what Avery, their exact words, but when an actor says, you know what, I've never played a drug addict, or I've never been through a divorce, I've never been on drugs, I've never done something, so I don't know how to play that part. I, what do you tell the actor? Because I, me, again, as a writer, a director and producer, I'm always like, you know what? It's about the performance. You have to study. So you have to become that, that character. But we have a lot of actors that don't want to play a part because they're afraid of what people may perceive of them after the performance. Mm. So what do you tell that person? Um, one, 
for me, I try to give everybody a chance. And then I work through some things in the beginning. And if I find out that I can't get the emotions that I need from you, that's where Gwen comes in and we make some changes so I can get what I need from you. You try to develop a person's strengths and their weaknesses. And then the reality of it is everybody can't do it just because they want to do it or they see somebody else doing it. I'm, I'm going to be like brutally honest. You cannot do this role and I'll find something else for you to do because I don't want people to walk away feeling brutal like I'm never going to be able to do it I just need you to be around some seasoned people so you can see how it's done versus turning you away um far as just like studying um you become that character you also have the ability to ad lib some people don't want you to ad lib I want you to take that role on and make it as real as possible take me back to that last line so that Keisha can pick up her line or Avery can pick up his line and that authentic relationship that I'm talking about says I know what this scene is about so if we ad lib this whole scene I'm okay with that because guess what (laughs) you're still conveying the message now there are some scenes where I will not allow changes because I want that message to be heard so word for word you know when we're dealing with this mental illness that's a word for word if there's a a girlfriend scene girl you betrayed me oh I'm sorry all of that you can do all of that and make it more Mm -hmm. real for the scene but there are just some things that I won't allow to happen and some things I will I will admonish our actor or actors to do two things somebody gave me a chance in um in Tazaki Shang's um I was the lady in orange, me and Keisha were on stage together. And yep. one of our mutual friends was like, come audition. And I was like, I don't know. And I got there and I started <laughs> reading and the producer said, girl, you was horrible. I was like, ooh. Mm. I was because into <laughs> Zaki. he's my mentor. If he you read into Zaki Shang's writing, you're like, girl, really? Yes. And so I had to like, post up things on the wall I had the the book because we went Mm. by the books I had the book in my hand even every night at a show because I was nervous and I realized guess what I'm a director and a playwright acting not for me I can act cool but acting on the stage and all that (laughs) it is not for me I appreciate it the way you were in that play though Margaret I completely appreciate that's why I tell everybody I appreciate Margaret so much because she did that work she put that work in as a to build a character um and Derek when you were saying what does a person uh how does a person become the character if they've never done it mm-hmm. um the way that it can be done is mimic some pain um yeah. mimic some moment in pain mm-hmm. and pain in your own personal life and when I was Lady Blue there's a scene in there where I have to describe an abortion mm. and and I've never had one but I dro- but I was able to say, get these none. I was able to draw into some pain right. and make sure that you understood that these claws were non at my womb. Wow. And, and it's, yeah. you felt that. So if yeah. you haven't done it, you know somebody that you can draw you some pain. Yeah, yeah. Or well, well, for me and the that. lady in orange, I had to... Um deal with my boyfriend going to his girlfriend's house and coming back and the pain Uh of walking in somebody else's shoes been there done that been there done that um because i want to make sure that everybody knows about treachery lies and deception Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. avery tell us what what the audience will get from from the stage play you will laugh that's for sure Mm -hmm. you you definitely will laugh um you may get a little oh no he didn't type uh, uh, atmosphere as well Mm -hmm. so you're gonna get a different variety of emotions from this play you will be happy you'll be sad you may get mad Mm -hmm. um it's gonna pull on your your emotions for sure definitely see tell us um with the the characters and everything what will people go away and um especially like with your character you play who in the play Oh, I play Shanae, uh, who's actually the lead. Um, shady Shanae. You know what? I am not that shady. Mm. I just met somebody. I just had to deal with somebody else's mess and cover it mm. up. You talk what? about shady. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so so that so in, for that part for that purpose, um, the 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 character that I have is someone who basically is older. She a cougar. She got mm. with this young dude who was promising her everything. And next thing you know, too much is happening. 
And so, you know, not to give too much away, but you just have to, someone can relate to somebody. There's, there's a best, I'm the best friend and the best friends keep it. You know, she's like, how could, you know, telling secrets, but I'm not right. telling secrets. Everybody's talking about it. I'm just, just, I'm just the source of the information. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> So Mark, they're talking. She's treacherous. They're she's treacherous. I'm the source. She's treacherous. Where can everybody go and um, purchase the tickets for Treachery, Lies, and Deception? Um, Bowie Performer Arts Theater is handling the tickets for us. So it's going to be on their website and you can go there um, to get tickets. Um, I'm going to do an early bird ticket probably in July. And then I want to do a VIP ticket with like gift bags. I have people that make like lotions and stuff and I want to put it in there like a night of romance um, gift bag for a person that's going to do a, a VIP ticket, get them some VIP seating, give them a gift bag. And then there'll just be the standard rate tickets um, that people can actually buy and so it's the Bowie Performing Arts Theater um, Bowie Maryland and it's going to be on their website um, I get with them probably mid-May and we're going to start setting the ticket information up so we'll have that shortly um, okay. but I'm excited about it and the cast if I'm excited about everything the cast members oh, that I we have um, I, I just, we have like nine good cast members because at one point I would have like 25 people on stage. Yes. But I got the numbers oh, down, I, honey. My budget <laughs> is so much better. So we have Zachary T. Brown, Keisha Kelly, Isaac Loyal. You did an interview with Isaac. He is one of my lead characters. Naja Mickens. This young lady is 15. Yes. He is awesome. He was, uh... I worked with her. She was in my okay. same, same script, different cast. Okay, she, she's in my play this time. And then Niecy Rollins, she's new to the stage. Tracy Scott is uh, 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 one of my old characters from the, the Game Changer. She is an amazing singer. Cortina Smith, oh my gosh, she blew me out the water with her <laughs> audition. And then Elisa Williams, she can sing and she has a role in there. And then we have Gwen Lewis, my stage manager. Um, I want to have... Um, Zach T. Brown to come and have an interview for your men's segment. I'm trying to introduce him because he's a fabulous singer, R&B, um, blues, everything. And so and he light on his feet too. <laughs> I can't with her, but him and him and Tracy, they sing. I got him. It's just good to everybody. One way or the other, <laughs> mental health, um, <laughs> mental illness, and right. domestic violence. But love and forgiveness bring it all together. Yeah. And so I'm excited about what we're bringing to the stage. The cast, like you said, the energy is there. Um, the first rehearsal that Avery came to afterwards, he came to me. He was like, "This is right. This this, this is, is the cast. This is it." And so I'm excited about it. And so. I just want y'all to get the inside scoop that Derek Darrell Dixon is going to be a part of Treachery, Lies, and Deception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't talk well, about listen, it. We, got about we got about 30 seconds. So again, okay. Treachery, Lies, and Deception, September 10th, 2022 at the Bowie Performance Theater Arts Center in Bowie, Maryland. So yes. we'll give you yes. the information when the tickets are going to be available and yes. to go on sale. So listen, we got 30 seconds. Avery, tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at official Avery and on Facebook, uh, Antoine Avery. And go at KC, where can everybody find you? I'm at Mecca's World and Mecca Kelly on Facebook. Mecca and World on Instagram, excuse me. Miss Margaret Bean, where can everyone follow you at? Well, first of all, don't leave out my P, Margaret P. Bean on all social media platforms. I have a website, MissMargaretPBean.com and everything Margaret P. Um, Bean um social media instagram uh what else is out there twitter i'm on everything so um <laughs> i'm having a new website developed so i'm doing a new marketing brand but i'm still going to keep the mb mpb entertainment llc um and margaret p bean um, my books are online at amazon.com under margaret p bean so I, I just use my name so that it won't just be remember the name margaret yeah, p. right <laughs> margaret p b and don't leave out my p my mama don't leave out for that. P. She, she <laughs> let me have it just like that she let me have it just like that don't leave out my p the p because let me tell you something it's margaret p for sure as my mama would say that bean is subject to change i keep telling y'all <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we can fix that up. We can fix Listen, that, yes. Yeah. Please make sure that you keep up with Margaret PB. And for the information on when the tickets are going to be available, Treachery, Lies, and Deception is going to be here September 10th at the Bowie Performance Theater Arts Center in Bowie, Maryland. And we are excited. We want to get there. We want to fill this show and sell it. Uh, yeah. Because again, I know this, this is a story that needs to be told. And plus, I don't think it's just going to be right here in Bowie, Maryland. This is going to be all over. They're going to be going to Atlanta, Philadelphia. They're going to be in Chicago. They're going to be in Houston, yeah. Texas. So I believe it, I'm going to speak it, and I just know uh, that this is going to be a great performance. So thank you once again for coming you. on. Thank and you. And I to talk to you and meet you personally now uh, on Talking With 3D. Thank so Lacey, you. you again, yes. please make sure that you follow me on TikTok, Derek Dixon 66 Follow me at, um, also on Instagram, Talking With 3D. Also go to Instagram and follow Plush Work TV and find out everything that we are doing. We got some new exciting things that are coming up and we want you to be a part of it and be involved. Thank you to my executive producer, Mike Lee, one of the best in the world. So again, thank you ladies and gentlemen for tuning in to Talking With 3D. I am your host, Derek Durrell Dixon. And don't forget the Durrell. Have a good <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember your race, it moves at your pace when marching towards your goals.